C'est un grand plaisir de vous voir en si grand nombre ce soir, tellement d'amis libéraux dévoués ici aujourd'hui. Merci d'être ici, merci pour tout ce que vous faites. And how about a huge round of applause for our tremendous party leader, Sachet Mera. And another full round of applause for that suit he was wearing tonight. Listen, since being elected to the role just over a year ago, he's done an incredible job of mobilizing the grassroots and growing our movement as we gear up for next year's election. This year alone, we've trained around 3,000 volunteers across Canada. We have held six days of action to connect with Canadians and have conversations with our neighbors. We've hosted nearly 20 campaign colleges. On Saturday, I was in Calgary for one of them, and I can tell you that we have incredibly talented and ambitious people ready to work hard and grow our movement right across the country. En plus, vers la fin de l'année dernière, on a eu le meilleur mois de novembre de l'histoire du Parti libéral en termes de collecte de fonds. Et le mois de mai, qu'on vient juste de terminer, a été notre meilleur pour le financement en dehors d'une année électorale. Thanks to all of you and liberals like you across the country, we just delivered the best May ever for grassroots fundraising in a non-campaign year. All of that is a testament to Sachet's leadership and to the dedication of the entire Liberal team working day in and day out to build winning campaigns from coast to coast to coast. But my friends, we can't lose sight of the fact that these are challenging and consequential times. Last week, I had the honor to speak with World War II veterans on the beaches of Normandy. Those brave men and women volunteered to put themselves in harm's way, to fight back against the scourge of fascism, to do what is right and put the collective interest ahead of their own. They volunteered because they knew that our values, our democracy, our freedom was worth fighting for. And 80 years after D-Day, Veterans like Jim and Leopold asked me, they asked all of us, to remain vigilant. They, of all people, know that democracy didn't happen by accident, and it won't continue without effort. Aujourd'hui, 80 ans après le débarquement de Normandie, la démocratie est encore menacée. Les démocraties à travers le monde sont menacées par des agresseurs qui veulent redessiner les frontières et par la démagogie et la désinformation. In these increasingly dangerous times and in this difficult and transformative period, we need responsible leadership. We need bold solutions and we need to keep fighting for progress. And that's exactly what this government is focused squarely on. Because of your support, Laurier Club members, donors, and volunteers across the country, we can keep fighting for progress. Since just the beginning of this year, we unveiled the most ambitious and comprehensive housing plan in Canadian history to deliver four million homes in the coming years. We're investing in AI, in batteries, in EVs, in clean tech to create good pay paying jobs for generations to come. On met sur pied un programme d'alimentation scolaire pour s'assurer que 400 000 enfants de plus aient toutes les chances de réussir. On aide 9 millions de Canadiens qui n'avaient pas d'assurance dentaire, d'aller chez le dentiste. D'ailleurs, en moins de six semaines, maintenant plus de 150 000 personnes, âgées, personnes âgées ont pu déjà recevoir des soins dentaires. Ça, ça fait une différence dans la vie de tout le monde. 
We're making insulin free for Canadians who need it. And we'll provide free prescription contraceptives because not only do we believe in a woman's right to choose, but we act on it. Tout ça, c'est du progrès. Non seulement il faut toujours se battre pour défendre notre projet, progrès, mais il faut aller encore plus loin. Alors on compte sur vous. Il faut continuer de parler de notre vision positive de l'avenir. Oui, on passe tous à travers des périodes difficiles, mais avec du leadership responsable, on va passer à travers la tempête. But don't take my word for it. As a former teacher, I always know how important it is to show your work. So let's look at the results. Within the G7, Canada has experienced the fastest post-pandemic job growth, the highest per capita foreign direct investment in 2023 in the world, and the uh, third highest in the world, and the IMF and the OECD both project that we will have the fastest growing economy in 2025. Now that's because of Canadians, obviously, but it's also because of responsible leadership. Les salaires augmentent plus vite que l'inflation, ce qui signifie que davantage de Canadiens prennent de l'avance malgré l'augmentation du coût de la vie. Et pendant que notre économie continue de croître, nos émissions sont inférieures à une période qu'avant la pandémie, ce qui prouve que la croissance économique et l'action climatique vont toujours ensemble. In fact, our climate plan is driving economic growth. Honda chose Canada to invest $15 billion in four EV facilities across Ontario. Air Products is building a $1.6 billion net zero hydrogen complex in Alberta. Et au Québec, Northvolt investit 7 milliards de dollars dans une nouvelle grande usine de batterie. Our economic progress, exemplified by these projects and hundreds of others like them, are generating thousands of good jobs that are putting more money in the pockets of Canadians. More money to raise your kids, to take a vacation, to buy a home, to live the Canadian dream. And our successful efforts to grow our economy means we're able to make critical investments to improve the lives of Canadians. Investments like in childcare. Our national child care system is already delivering $10 a day child care in over half of the provinces and territories, saving families up to $14,000 a year. And it has enabled women's participation in the workforce to reach a record high. Dental care is also transforming Canadians' lives for the better. Just the other week, I spoke with Bev, who is 74 years young and works at Avery's Farm Market in Truro, Nova Scotia. She told me how grateful she was to get dental work done for the first time this year, something that was only possible because she had access to the Canada Dental Care Plan. And importantly, we're accomplishing all this while maintaining the lowest debt to GDP ratio and the lowest deficit in the G7. Now, unlike conservatives who think that cuts are the solution to every problem, we believe and we are showing the government can do the things that will make Canadians' lives better. My friends, this is what fiscally responsible, pragmatic and progressive politics looks like. And yet, while we're standing up for Canadians, while we're helping them through these difficult times, what are Pierre Polyev's extreme conservative MPs up to? 
Well, they're standing on Parliament Hill pledging to restrict a woman's right to choose. They're courting far-right extremists. Les politiciens conservateurs abandonnent les Ukrainiens qui se battent pour leur liberté et la nôtre. Et ils veulent rendre ça gratuit, de polluer, pendant qu'on est en train de faire face à de plus en plus de feux de forêt et d'événements météorologiques extrêmes accentués par les changements climatiques. This is just who conservative politicians are. This is just who Pierre Polyev is. He's been a member of parliament for 20 years now. What has he done during these past two decades? Well, as housing minister, he built zero new apartments, zero co-ops, and a grand total of, get this, six affordable housing units across the country. He disgracefully told residential school survivors that they didn't deserve compensation, but instead needed to learn the value of hard work. Shame on him. He made changes to the Elections Act that made it harder for vulnerable people to vote, while he himself voted for bills that seek to reopen the debate on women's reproductive freedom. And at every opportunity, he voted to cut vital public services so he could give tax breaks to the wealthiest. Pierre Poliev pense que la priorité d'un gouvernement devrait être d'en faire moins pour les gens. Son seul plan, c'est l'austérité. C'est de faire des coupures. It's a new version of the same old trickle-down economics plan that has never worked. Cut the programs that Canadians rely on. Stoke the flames of division and continue to spread disinformation and distract Canadians from the choice before them in the next election. But the choice couldn't be clearer, my friends. A liberal government means building on a plan that is delivering real, positive results for Canadians, growing the economy, making government work for working people, and creating fairness for every generation. This is the choice that we're facing in the next election, and it's more than about just which party forms government. It's about which kind of country we want to be, about who are we as Canadians. Are we a country that embraces the lessons taught to us by the heroic veterans I met in Normandy last week who put their lives on the line in the prime of their youth to stand up for what is right? Are we a country that recognizes the obstacles we face and commits to meet the moment, much like those brave men and women did 80 years ago? As I said at the beginning, these are challenging times. People are worried and they're anxious. And Pierre Polyev is trying to seize on these emotions and sell Canadians on a vision based on anger, despair, division, and revenge. But that's not responsible. That's not leadership. And that's certainly not the liberal way. We liberals, we believe in solutions, not empty slogans. Building up, not breaking down. Freedom, not fear. And liberals, believe that the most powerful word in the English language is hope. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. Hope in a more prosperous future. Hope that better is always possible. Hope in Canada. But hope alone isn't enough. Hope always has to be backed up by hard work. Alors continuez de vous retrousser les manches, mes amis, de donner, d'être bénévole, de cogner aux portes, de partager notre vision positive et ambitieuse pour l'avenir, and keep having those vital conversations with your friends, family, and neighbors. But first, let's not lose sight of an exciting race that's just around the corner. With the help of all of you, we will be electing Leslie Church as our next Member of Parliament for Toronto-St. Paul's on June 24th. 
So my friends tonight, thank you for your support. Thank you for everything you've done for this party. Thank you in advance for everything you're going to do to connect with Canadians. Let's do what it takes to win the next election. Thank you all. Merci mes amis. Bonne soirée.